you've ever thought about working for yourself, you're probably faced with a list of pros and cons, all the things that are going to be great about it and all the things that you're probably a little bit worried about. Having worked for myself now for the last six and a half years, I can tell you that the pros outweigh the cons, but there are some cons. And in this video, I want to share some of the things that I would say make it difficult working for yourself, especially if you are a sole trader or you're a solopreneur, although I don't particularly like that term. So hi, I'm Bev and as I say, I've been working for myself now for the last six and a half years. I was an accidental entrepreneur. I came to the entrepreneurial world late in life, uh, in my 50s. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't have a list of pros and cons. I didn't think that hard about it. But what I have found is that since I've been working for myself, there have been so many highlights and so many benefits, which I'm not going to talk about necessarily in this video. I've done other videos talking about why I think self-employment is a great thing, especially if like me, you have ADHD. But in this video, I wanted to share the things that I actually think are a challenge. And the first of those is the lack of structure. So especially um, for somebody with ADHD, we are full of paradoxes. We don't like structure, but we need it. <laughs> we don't like routine, but we need it. And when you start working for yourself, all of the structures that you would have as an employed person going in and working in a company aren't there. So you have to create them yourself. And if like me, you're not particularly great at organizing, then that can be a challenge. And when you're working for yourself, you are everything, your all departments, your finance, your operations, your admin support, you are sales and marketing, you are everything. So when you're getting started, having to try and put all of that structure in place can be a real challenge. It's not impossible and it's certainly easier probably now than it's ever been because there are so many productivity tools and automation tools that you can get you know you can use to help create structure but it's not there and that can be really challenging if you don't know what you're doing because most of us when we come into a business we come in with the skills that we need to deliver our service or to uh, deliver the product whatever it is we're selling but we don't necessarily come in with all of the back-end business skills so for example I had never had to sell or market myself I was was and still am pretty hopeless with numbers so I had to learn pretty fast and I learned pretty quickly to outsource <laughs> that's probably one of the best things you can do with the things that you don't really enjoy doing um, but I also then had to learn a lot of the systems needed to put in automation. So learning how to use things like email, marketing software, accounting software. There's so much software that makes the job easier, but you have to learn how to use that software in the first place. So structure is definitely something that is challenging when you first start your business. The second point, and it's kind of related to that, is that you have to suddenly become multi-skilled. You can't rely on just having the skills to deliver your service. You've got to take the time to learn all of the other things that you need to do, like learning how to sell, learning how to market, learning how to manage your accounts, all of the, the different functions. And that can be challenging when you're also starting to bring on clients, hopefully, and you're having to serve your clients. So time is a, a massive challenge and it can feel sometimes like you give up a 40 hour week working for somebody else to take on a 60 hour week working for yourself and sometimes more in the early days because you're not only having to set yourself up and start marketing yourself and, and getting clients but you're also having to learn all of the other stuff that's going on at the same time. I would say if you are thinking about leaving your job and starting a business of your own that 
you try and plan ahead so that you've got time to do a lot of that setup and the learning before you're actually in a position where you have to start making money from your business and therefore you've got um, more time available to do the actual um, sort of sales and delivery of your service once you're working full time for yourself. Number three is it's very hard to take time off and even if you have good support and maybe you've outsourced some stuff it's still very hard to mentally switch off from a business that is yours it's very different to when you're working for somebody else and you get your annual holiday and you can you know literally walk away close the door although that's how it should be i know not everybody else finds it that easy to walk away, walk away even if they're in an employed role but in reality you should be able to walk away from the work and go and switch off have your holiday and come back and it's much more difficult to do that when it's your business be especially if you are running everything yourself it's almost impossible to fully fully wind down in fact I know lots of people who when they've started their business haven't had a holiday for such a long time and actually that's you know not always why we start a business especially if we're starting it in later life it's intended to give us more freedom and we can feel like we've actually got much less freedom than we had before which can be an absolute challenge number four is about self-doubt and the reality of the insecurity that comes with working for yourself you are questioning your abilities constantly are you good enough? Is your product good enough? Is your service good enough? Um, are you adding enough value? How do you price your things? Are you worth the price you want to charge? We have all of this negative self-talk going on and that can be really demoralizing and it can, it can be quite depressing and bring you down. There are ways around that and I think a lot of it is about finding ways to reframe that negative self-talk but a lot of the time it is just about getting pushing through until you start to make sales and you have people giving you recommendations and testimonials that reinforce that actually you are doing a good job because it's so easy to get into our own head and just have this sort of negative spiral of I'm not good enough I don't know enough um, I'm not adding enough value when in reality you probably are <laughs> but it's it it's a constant battle between the, the two voices in your head one saying you're doing okay and the other one saying oh I'm not sure if you're doing enough here um, and that yeah that can be quite a challenge the last one which I didn't really expect was the loneliness that it's very very lonely especially if you've come from an environment where you're working in a team and you've got lots of people around you to bounce ideas off and to just have you know chats over a tea break and you might go and have lunch with your workmates when you're working for yourself especially if you're working from home as a lot of us coaches and freelancers do you don't really see anybody and that loneliness that isolation can really get to you after a while there's lots of things that we can do now there's co-working spaces that are a good place to go and make new business connections and also just feel like you're working with other people or you can do co-working sessions online maybe through zoom where perhaps you're not in the same room as somebody but you can you can still have that feeling of connection and have know that somebody's there but other than that it can it can really get lonely I would find myself and I still do going and working in cafes because I just like having the buzz of knowing that people around me are there I don't even have to be talking to them just knowing that there's people around me gives me that feeling of not being so isolated so there you go, they're sort of five things that I just think you need to be aware of. I certainly wouldn't say they are deal breakers and I would absolutely recommend anybody 
giving self-employment a go if that's what you're thinking about doing. The benefits far outweigh the few downsides. But I think it is important that you are aware and you go into business with your eyes open and understand that these things are likely to be a challenge for you. So, you know, the negative self-talk, the loneliness, the lack of structure, the fact that you have to be a jack of all trades and multi-skilled in so many different business disciplines, and the fact that you can probably say goodbye to a few holidays and uh, probably a few nights out with your friends, at least in the beginning. And if you are on the fence about whether or not starting your own business is right for you, then watch this video next where I'm sharing my journey and my story and hopefully it might inspire you to do the same.